Luis had actually come out to Watsonville. He was, his family's still there in Watsonville to this day, actually. But Luis came out to Watsonville to pick strawberries uh, when he was caught and um, sent home. Before he did, he made a last phone call to his uh, fiance, a, a beautiful young lady by the name of Casimira. Um, and, um, and he told her, Casi, you know, Casimira, we're, he said, they're bringing, us, they're bringing all of us back. Um, we're going to be back on an airplane. And uh, when, I, when I arrive to Jocotepec, I'm going to be bringing you a mariachi, and we're going to get married. And that's what she remembered, the last conversation she had. And, um, and then the next thing she knew, she was standing on the corner market listening to the radio, because that's what they did in the 40s there. And um, they heard the news come on. And um, the news, it was the radio that said uh, uh, there was a terrible plane crash of Braceros, who were part of the Bracero program. And they read the names of all the passengers over the radio waves throughout Mexico. And that's where she heard that her young lover, Luis Miranda Cuevas, was killed in this plane crash. Luis came through the Bracero program. And I'm going to read this section of the um, evaluation test of the Bracero program. <clears throat> you had to take a test whenever you wanted to be part of the program to come prove you were worthy of coming to the United States to work. The evaluation was a test of degradation. If a worker could endure the test, then they could certainly endure life as a bracero in the north. First, Luis's upper eyelids were turned inside out and inspected for conjunctivitis. And then his mouth prodded and examined for sores or abscesses, any signs of declining health. If his body had any scars on it, even just one, he would be turned away and scorned. We don't want troublemakers here. Next, Luis's testicles were gripped and kneaded by strange fingers, after which he was made to bend over, spread his cheeks so that his anus could be scrutinized and prodded with a tongue depressor. His hands were then examined for calluses, a sure sign of whether or not a man was capable of hard work. Often, see, men would cut their hands or work a shovel handle days before the examination just to build up a good callus. No callus meant no job. Once Luis's physical state was determined, then he was asked to assemble a children's puzzle of Dumbo the Elephant to assess his intellect. Men could not be, quote, too dumb nor, quote, too smart. It was a, quote, specific kind of worker they were looking for, one that was, quote, fit enough to perform the, nece the necessary duties of a field laborer, while at the same time would not look to raise trouble. That's from the actual recruitment records. For this reason, Luis Miranda Cuevas would keep his eyes lowered to the ground so as not to appear threatening. It was one of the many lessons he was taught by, the, by some of the more experienced enganchados. Luis would pass his test, and eventually he would be admitted to work in the United States. To officiate the passing, the Bracero Program Welcoming Committee would initiate him with a ritual delousing of DDT, a powerful insecticide they would spray from the top of his black hair into his ears, across his eyelids, into his nostrils, down over his cold, trembling, naked body, into the creases and folds of his partes nobles, hair follicles, between his fingers, between his toes, the soles of his feet, and back up again.